here we're in denial. And denial turns us into sheep. Yes. So there are wolves, there are sheep. And then he said, there are sheep dogs. He said, I am a predator too. I am a mediator too. But I live to protect the flock and confront the wolf. Let's come back to the sheep dog in a minute. You know, my cops say, they have all this mental stuff interesting. But we're cops. It's all this stuff applied to us over here. And that's a fair question. So in the law enforcement meeting, in law enforcement every year, somewhere between 50 and 80 cops are murdered in the line of duty. Now, if it weren't for body armor, that number would double what it is. Body armor cuts under dead cops in half right at the top. If we had 1970s medical technology, that number would be four times what it is. Take away two of many, many factors. Take away two of just many factors. Take away body armor, take away medical technology since 1970, and the number of murder cops would be eight times what it is. More like 400 murder cops if you take away two of many factors. But how many cops hurt themselves? Law enforcement suicides. Numbers all over the map. Accident reporting to the feds about 100 a year. But we know half of all the agencies do not report. Almost everybody studying the topic will tell you about 200. But there's people who say for every law enforcement suicide we report, there's one we hide. They say the number more like 450. Whatever the number is. Every year we lose more cops to their own hand than to the criminals. Whether you're a soldier in combat, a cop on the beat, or a citizen at the hour of need, the mind can be the weak link, you understand? A body, all these shades of body show healthy, the mind is the weak link. So let's go back to Norman and Beach. How many of y'all saw the movie uh, uh, American Sniper? I recommend it very highly if you haven't had the chance to see it. Early in the movie, Dad talks about the sheep, the wolf, the sheep. Now, remember that? That wasn't in Chris Kyle's book. They pulled that straight out of my book, word for word, with my permission. And one of the blogs that was offended by that movie, what kind of people would be offended by that movie? Yeah. He said, all the sheep ducks have come to this guy grossly. He's got that one right. He said, of course, there's no scientific foundation for it. All of us out there. One of the most studied topics on the planet. People who do not have PTSD. The folks, uh, Holocaust survivors and POWs, who face unthinkable evil and do not get PTSD. You believe this, said people? We study them. I met one a while back. As a young pilot, he'd been shot down over North Vietnam and was a prisoner of war for year after year. Year after year, the torture, malnutrition in North Vietnam without end in sight. He said, I walked out of that POW camp. It's a simple medical fact. It did not have PTSD, and most of us didn't. I said, sir, that's resiliency. That's what we study. What made that possible? Here's what he said. Every evil act the enemy inflicted upon us renewed our faith. We're in the right side of this war. Think about that. Every bad thing that happens in this world should renew your faith that the world needs that you have to get. And, 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 and again, the, the sheep will hide and that's okay, but the sheep dog will prepare for the moment of truth and that's good too. We've got a lot more stuff to lay down here, but I want you to understand right in front of you. Ultimately, these people, ultimately, these people were shattered by combat. These people were crazy when they got there. If you have no propensity for violence, then you're a nonviolent citizen. When the wolf shows up, you're doomed. If you have a propensity for violence, an absence of empathy, violence with that empathy is a pretty good thumbnail definition of what? A psychopath, a sociopath, a wolf. But what if you had a propensity for violence and a love for the lambs? What if you spent a lifetime nurturing the capacity of violence, their desire to use it in a righteous battle? Not what do you have? A sheep dog, a protector. But whatever they got, we wanted. 
That's resiliency. I was a keynote speaker at the first Proctor and Fence Y Resiliency Conference. I was the only speaker at the, at the second Department of Defense Resiliency Conference. And we're going to spend the rest of the day talking about this. We're going to put all these pieces together. Trust me, please stay with me on this ride we're going on. I know the first bit is a little hard. Best line's hard. I had to hear John Garland to it four times where I could relax and take notes. It's hard. But just understand how desperately the world still needs what you have to give. Understand there is a place for you in this world. Now, if we choose to stay on the low end of that scale, there's nothing wrong with that. There are no ultimate sheep ducks. I'll tell you that people have it down the scale. If we choose to stay on the low end of that scale, it's okay. But the further we come up that scale, the better able we are to survive physically and psychologically when the bad stuff comes down. And understand that your sacrifice overseas and your sacrifice over here is for a noble and worthy purpose. You've kept them off our back for 16 and a half years. Believe in who you are. Believe in what you do. Know. The first step in resilience is motivation. And what greater motivation can there be than our children? Yes. Who now walk out that door and take a boat for your kids, your grandkids? I, uh, waiting at home for me is my high school sweetheart, my bride of 42 years. She was 15 when I proposed to her. We are from Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> Two years later, she married a crazy army paratrooper, and she's been in this ride with me for 42 years. More precious than life itself, and yet, for the last 21 years, I've been on the road, two, three hundred days a year. But she believes in what we do, and I believe in what we do. Whatever we're called to do, whatever we're blessed to do, we must do to the utmost of our ability to understand. And there's great peace in that. Take our part of the world, make it as safe as possible. I know that's not as hard for some of you to recognize or at least see and recognize just how desperately we need our sheep ones to take our part of the world, make it as safe as possible. And understand just what you have accomplished in 16 years of war by keeping that hell over there. Believe in who you are, believe in what you do. The first step in resiliency, your sacrifice for a noble and worthy purpose. If I'm old soldier, like play like my old soldier rules me, that means that Tim and I bring every hour in the hour. We've gone just, gone just about an hour here, and here's the plan now. Oops, uh, 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 how many current or prior service members have we got in the room? How many 